today we're going to be dealing with an issue that I get asked by a lot of my clients about, which is sort of the balance of downforce and drag. Now, a lot of people come to me asking to reduce drag on their aero kit or say that they aren't going for high downforce setup because they're low power, so they want to go for something very low drag and aero efficient, and they can't be bothered doing full wing setups. Now, the problem is I think that a lot of people misunderstand and think that downforce doesn't help you on straights. And in actual fact, it helps you in both corners and braking zones and straights. So today we're just going to quickly look at some simulations of a straight so you can get an idea what sort of effect downforce and drag have on a car and if drag is really your enemy and how much downforce helps you in a straight line. So the Excel spreadsheet we're looking at is based on the equations in my what speed does downforce start working video so you can go and check that out if you want more info on that but we're just going to have a look at the outputs of those, which are specifically the speed versus distance down the straight, speed versus time down the straight, and the total time taken down the straight. So what I've set up here is an effective straight. Um, to start with, we're gonna have a 450 meter long straight. I've got a 60 meter radius corner coming on and an 85 meter radius corner coming off. But these are pretty typical values. I think they're pretty standard. I'm not gonna play around with those in this simulation because it's just gonna be too many variables. And I've set up a pretty standard car too. We've got an 1,000 kilo car, so strips, light and road car. Um, I've given it 200 kilowatts of power. Um, and we've got, at the moment, zero downforce and a coefficient of drag of about 0.4 on 1.8 meters squared. To start off with, let's just run the car by itself with no error. So with this configuration, we end up with 8.79 seconds for our straight time and we end up with a peak speed of about 256 k's an hour. Now, if we go through and we add the downforce, we up it to a coefficient of negative 0.5, which isn't very hard to achieve at all, we see the time drop by a fairly small amount. So our straight goes down to 8.75 seconds, so we're down sort of 0.4 of a second, and our top speed goes up by 0.1 of a kilometer an hour. So not a huge amount that we're seeing there, but we've gained performance in corners without sacrificing anything in a straight line, and that's achievable to do if you're trying to keep your drag the same as factory and just add downforce, which is what a lot of people ask me for, and you'll see that this doesn't give you a huge benefit on the straights. Now, if we double this downforce and double the drag, let's see what happens. You'll see that even with that fairly inefficient aero mod, we've managed to only drop about sort of 0.15 of a second off our straight time, and having this higher downforce would definitely be helping in the corners. Now this is obviously incredibly inefficient, and let's go through and punch through some numbers on a real car that I've actually worked on. Now the numbers I'm punching in this time are from a car that I designed the aerodynamics package on, and it's got a coefficient of lift of about negative 3.7, this is a, a pro level time attack car, um, and it's got quite a high coefficient of drag of 1.1. Now this gives us a straight time of 8.76 seconds. So you can see we're pretty much back to where we were before, um, even with the massively high drag, just because of how much speed we've carried through the corners and how late we can brake sort of thing. Um, if we look at our peak speed though, despite the fact that our straight time is the same, our peak speed has dropped by 16 kilometers per hour. Now we've dropped to all that speed but we aren't actually any slower on the straight, We're pretty much exactly the same speed on the straight. And we'll gain all that time back in the corners later on, which is actually quite an interesting thing. Now the aerodynamics package on this particular car was actually designed for a car with much more power, about a thousand horsepower. So let's just quickly run those same three configurations on the car with a thousand horsepower instead. Now if we look at the thousand horsepower car with no aero, it's clearly going to struggle a little bit, particularly at the start of the straight where it's going to be very traction limited. Also, your drag will be far less of a factor because you've got a lot more power to push it. So our initial baseline times for just 1,000 horsepower, no downforce, um, minimal drag, is 7.72 seconds, so about a second faster than our original condition because we've got a lot more power, but that's perhaps not as much faster as you'd expect, but it's because we've got a lot of traction limiting going on. Our peak speed, however, rises to 304 k's an hour, which is a lot up from where it was. Now by adding on a negative 0.5 coefficient of lift and keeping that drag the same, we cut a much more substantial chunk out of our time this time because again, we're far more traction limited. So this is going for the same drag as stock setup, but now with added downforce. Not a huge amount of added downforce at that. 
This gives us a time of 7.47 seconds and a peak speed of 321 k's an hour. So just by adding that little bit of downforce, our speed down the straight has gone up from 304 to 321. So we're looking at about 17 k's an hour by adding downforce. Now, if we double the downforce and double the drag, we've actually still improved our time because we've got more power. The drag penalty didn't do anything. So now we have 7.26 seconds. So we've taken another two tenths off our straight time and our top speed is now at actually 334 k's an hour. So we've actually increased our trap speed because we have now got more grip the entire way along the straight. The other thing to perhaps note with doubling the drag is that because we're able to accelerate under full power for a long time, we actually end up with our braking force being effectively increased by the drag. So what we're losing in acceleration, the small bit we're losing there, we're gaining back in braking, which is why we're still seeing really similar times as we start to increase it further. For example, if I keep the coefficient of lift at negative one and drop the drag back down to negative to 0.4, we only gain 0.01 of a second, which is not much because we have so much power at our disposal. Now, if we go one step further and go to the real time attack package, we end up with a significant improvement in our overall time because we now have a heap of downforce. We have gone up a tiny bit in top speed as well, not a huge amount, but just that little bit. So we're now at 339 Ks an hour, so we're up 5 Ks an hour from before and we are now at 6.78 seconds. So we've shaved off another four tenths just by increasing the downforce and still adding more drag. So the thing to really take away there is, is that the increased drag is not a problem if you have higher power, you can go nuts with that. But even at lower power levels, it's still useful to increase your downforce, even if it is at the cost of a little bit of drag. Now, obviously those variables are going to depend on your circuit, your setup, all that, which is why simulation is an important tool. We can also see the result of the comparison graphically here. As far as the time goes, pretty much the more downforce you have, the better your time gets in all scenarios. And the balance between downforce and drag becomes far more important at low power levels. As far as peak speed goes, we see differing trends for whether you're high or low power. If you're a relatively low powered car or you're running comparatively high drag, you're going to end up with the higher downforce, higher drag setups costing you more in peak speed, even if you get it back in time. Whereas if you have a high power car, running extra downforce actually increases your trap speed because you have better traction out of the corners and you can put that power down for longer, which is an issue because you're going down the straights. And of course, I think that's pretty evident when you look at things like drag cars, which still run wings, even though they're just straight line cars. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative and it helps in the setup of your car for a, a track day or a time attack event or a race. If you need simulation of this sort or analysis of your setup and your car done, go to www.jkfaero.com and send off an inquiry there and we'll see if we can sort you out with a consulting simulation package that's within your budget. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to check out my other videos, subscribe and leave a comment below. And hopefully I'll see you next time.